Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Terrapin Crossroads, ongoing celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Grateful Dead. Tonight, we bring you 1980, 35 years ago. All right, so here's some things that happened in 1980. Uh, the Dow Jones closed the year at 963. I think it's 17,000 ish today. Interest rates were 21.5%. The average cost of a new house, $69,000. A gallon of gas, $1.20. The average monthly rent, especially in Marin, $300 a month. <laughs> Uh, a Magnavox home VHS recorder was $700. A VHS home movie camera was $1,600. And if you wanted to go to Toys R Us and get Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, it was $4.75. Uh, 1980 was the beginning of the Reagan era, which is a big disaster, as we all know. Um, uh, the Iran-Iraq war began. We failed at trying to rescue the hostages in Iran. Uh, the United States led a boycott of the US Olympics and protest over Russia's invasion of Af Afghanistan. Uh, the Winter Olympics were in Lake Placid, New York, and the US hockey team had their miracle on ice with their victory over the Soviet Union. Uh, Mount St. Helens erupted. More on that later. The video game Pac-Man was released. CNN became the first 24-hour news station. And 1980 saw the release of a post-it note for the first time. And lastly, very sadly, uh, John Lennon was murdered by a man whose name we will not say. Um, so in the, in the film world, we had Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back, Superman II, Raging Bull, and The Coal Miner's Daughter. In the Billboard Top 10, it was a little bit, you know, a lot of weird styles. Uh, Casey and the Sunshine Band was still trying to stay relevant. Rupert Holmes with Escape, which was the Pina Colada song. Uh, there were some Blondie, Captain and Tennille, Kenny Rogers, Barbra Streisand, Queen had a couple of songs, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, and another one, Bites the Dust. Uh, Billy Joel, it's still rock and roll to me. Christopher Cross with Sailing. Um, and of course, John Lennon, just like starting over, hit number one at the end of the year, a few weeks after his murder. All right, in Grateful Deadland, uh, there were 86 shows in 1980. And I personally was very fortunate I saw 55 shows in 1980. Um, and I can say from firsthand experience, they were on fire. Uh, the song selection, the song selection was starting to grow because Brent was getting more comfortable. Uh, in 1978 and 1979, they played the wheel once. In 1980, it jumped to 11 times. So there you go. So they were starting to resurrect things. Uh, in 1970 and 70, 78 and 79, they played Morning Dew once. Uh, in 1980, they played it four times. Uh, in 1987, it was up to 17 Morning Dews in that year. So uh, in 1980, they played 59 Altheas, 54 Saint of Circumstances, 50 Alabama Getaways, 50 Lost Sailors. So they were really playing the new record, which was Go to Heaven. And if you can't tell, I just did get my new edition of Dead Bass 50, so I have all those, yeah, those facts. Um, and so they were playing all these songs from the new record called Go to Heaven, and Go to Heaven had a, an interesting album cover. Um, Phil, tell us a little bit about that. Well, somebody who shall be nameless came up with the bright idea to dress us all in white suits and I, th I think at one point they, were, they wanted to have wings on these white suits, you know, and with, with lots of fog and, and uh, you know, the, uh, the idea was, well, well they're, they're, here's the Grateful Dead in heaven. <laughs> Go to heaven. Go to heaven. And, 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 and the, 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 album, the title of the album d didn't have anything to do with anything that was on the album. It strictly had to do with the album cover. So that was the whole concept. The Grateful Dead go to heaven with these suits. <laughs> And uh, there was, uh, I guess there was a, a plan to have on the back of the, of the album, and this, these were still vinyl, I guess, at that point. And, and uh, 
uh, there was, it was going to be then uh, the Grateful Dead go to hell and we would be all you know, uh, dressed up in demon suits and yeah. shit like that. <laughs> so uh, thankfully that didn't happen. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the lamest album cover we ever came up with. <laughs> Agreed. So uh, a couple other things that happened in 1980. Um, John Belushi came out of the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey in uh, March of 1980, uh, did a cartwheel, played U.S. Blues, and I believe it was also April Fool's 1980 where they all switched instruments and played uh, an April Fool's joke on everybody, and everybody, I think Garcia was on drums, and uh, I don't remember. Mickey was on bass, I think. Yeah, that must have been really good. Um, in Boulder, in June of 1980, they celebrated their 15th anniversary with some shows two shows in Boulder. Um, and then, of course, there was the volcano erupting in Portland, Oregon in June of 1980. Yeah, so and, we're, yeah, we're, we're playing in Portland. Where was it? Uh, it was in an arena, I forget. Uh, some, yeah, some probably the basketball arena or college or something. And we're, we're playing a play, and we, we finish the set, and we come out, and so come off stage, and somebody says, oh, hey, man, did you know that the volcano erupted when you were playing Fire on the Mountain? Oh, really? <laughs> well, talk about a dragon with matches. <laughs> anyway, uh, and so when we went outside, it was still ra it was raining ash. I mean, it, 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 it looked like gray snowflakes, really huge gray snowflakes. And, you, you, you know, and, and at first I, I, I couldn't figure out what it was. And then and, and I picked it, took it out. And, and, and it's, it's this like grid, crystal grid of of of, vol of lava. I remember getting it in our teeth even. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they were. The, 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 yeah. And um, so, and then we the, all night long we were getting uh, we were getting ash reports, like snow reports. There's six inches of ash in Bend, Oregon, and there's. <laughs> Again, that Grateful Dead synchronicity that can only happen. Uh, another uh, interesting 1980 run of shows, they all went to Alaska. And um, I think it was the summer solstice. So I think we all had big high hopes for that magical moment. I think we probably all took extra quantities of LSD for that reason. And um, where, where, that venue was, it was a small venue, right? Yeah, it was a high school auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> the Grateful Anchorage, Dead go back Alaska, to high school. Yeah. I, I bet they got something up there now right? for, for music. And then because it was the summer solstice during the set break when we all went outside, it was still... It was still daylight, it was 10 o'clock at night. It was pretty cool. Uh, later in the summer, in August, they played the Mississippi River Festival uh, in Edwardsville, Illinois. And, and during Deal, the last song of the first set, lightning hit the sound system and kind of blew it up a little bit. And, and it all, it was raining and flooding and... Uh, um, I remember seeing all the tapers like running and pouring water out of their D5 tape decks because yeah. it just like really came down hard. Um, they also did a couple shows in Southern California. They did one in San Diego and one at the Pauley Pavilion. I think that was the end of June, first day in July. There was a day off in between. And I know that myself and about 10 friends, we all went to Disneyland and had a very psychedelic experience yeah. there, um, which was super fun. And also, and I don't know the details, and Phil doesn't either, but a apparently Bob Weir and Mickey Hart both got arrested after the show in San Diego. And Rifkin um, too, right? And Rifkin also, yeah. right, 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 yeah. Um, uh, they saw some deadhead getting arrested, and Bobby and Mickey tried to intervene with the police, and the police oh just cuffed yeah. him and, and took him away. Yeah. So, oh, um, no, that, so that's what happened. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Um, so the Warfield. Uh, then we get to the fall, and we have the Warfield. Fifteen nights. And Bill Graham, Bill Graham brought the magic. So tell us a little bit about the Warfield. Well, yeah, it was... It was uh, we had, we had just delivered ourselves of uh, a studio uh, the, the studio records that we were required to do with our con in our contract, uh, and so I don't know why we decided we wanted to make a record, but we decided uh, it it sort of I don't know why would we want to make another record, <laughs> but anyway it could be a it could be a live record this time so. And so that was a little more uh, a little more interesting to us. So we, we thought we'd uh, we thought we'd mix it up a little bit and and bring back some acoustic music. And so we did uh, did the uh, did the 
three set acoustic, two electric uh, set shows and recorded them all. And I guess there was, I heard somewhere there was 800 reels of tape. We do tend to drag on. <laughs> <laughs> Redundancy. Mumble, 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 mumble. And, um, and when Bill announced the shows you were talking earlier. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, with an ad in the Chronicle, it was just a, it was almost a blank page with just the words, they're not the best of what they do, they're the only ones who do what they do. And, and the information, and not, not a word about who it was or even when, but when, when the tickets went on sale, they just sold out. No, no mention of the Grateful Dead. And then we got to, uh, ra uh, well, then we went to New Orleans for two shows, and, and uh, I, I saw six of those Warfield shows. I saw the first three and the last three. I was pretending to be in college at the time on the East Coast, so I was bouncing back and forth. And uh, then we all went to New Orleans, and um, they played down in New Orleans, and they were super uptight down there. I remember there was somebody taping, they had a tape deck under the seat, and somebody like got all freaked out and thought they were like had a bomb or something, and they called security, and they got escorted out, and then a bunch of deadheads were dancing, and they got thrown out of the theater for dancing. Um, you know, reminiscence of, you know, busted down on and Bourbon This is Street. 1980. And, uh, but back then they would take your Ticketron ticket and they'd rip it and they were throwing all the stubs on the ground. So we just went downstairs and picked up the stubs because you kept the other big half of your stub and just stuck them back through the wall and uh, through the door, right, the, the glass doors, and everybody just taped them back together and just kept coming back in. So they get thrown out for dancing and then just come back in. We were very resourceful deadheads. Yeah. Um, so uh, after, after two shows in New Orleans, the same format, acoustic, two electric, they went to Radio City Music Hall for eight nights. And, and uh, we can, of course, can we continue to record. A few hundred more reels. <laughs> and uh, uh, they, they, at that point, um, Radio City Music Hall had just gotten landmark status in New York City, and they made a poster. Right, and they, 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 they were very puffed up by their landmark status. <laughs> And so we made our poster with uh, the, the, our, the dancing skeleton deadheads, you know, you know, looking fondly down, leaning on, uh, you know, giant skeletons, leaning, fo looking fondly down on Radio City Music Hall. And uh, they absolutely freaked out. <laughs> you know. the, this means, they say to us, that you are, you are, you are, prophesying the demise of Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> okay. Men and, in suits. And then, and then, and then, and then they called us un-American. <laughs> they called us un-American. There's nothing more American than the Grateful Dead. Yeah! <laughs> no, but they sued us for a million dollars and it never went anywhere. Yeah. The, this, the suit had no merit. Exactly. Um, and then the other great thing about Radio City Music Hall is they brought their friends from Saturday Night Live into host. And they, they, uh, Halloween night, 1980, um, was a live simulca simulcast that was not on the web. There was no web then. And uh, Franken and Davis, uh, Al Franken and Tom Davis, um, hosted, and, and they did a telethon. Yeah, they did a telethon. Jerry's kids. Anybody <laughs> remember Jerry Lewis? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, well, the, he, if, you, you know, if you remember him, you remember he had his telethon. It was muscular dystrophy, right? Exactly, yeah. Every year he had his telethon to raise money for muscular dystrophy. And so Franken and Davis decide, and this is the same guy who's now a two-term U.S. senator from Minnesota. Who, who was at Fairly Well, by the way. Oh, yeah. Did he, was he there? I yeah, I saw there. him, yeah. Uh, Al was in Chicago hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, so they decided they were going to do a Jerry's Kids telethon benefit as part of this simulcast. And uh, but uh, but it, what was the guy's name? Tumbleweed. 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 Yeah. We had a, we had a, our deadhead who we wanted to raise enough money for him to get a ticket to the next show. The next show. <laughs> and a hit of acid. <laughs> we didn't really. I mean, we weren't asking for much. <laughs> it wasn't a multi-million dollar. Um, all right, so uh, one last thing. I'm going to go back to the Warfield for a second. So um, I was an 18-year-old kid and, and at the Warfield in, in San Francisco, and the, and the lobby of the Warfield was just completely decked out with Grateful Dead memorabilia, posters and handwritten lyrics and stuff that 
nowadays we take for granted because we see it on the internet all the time and we're all very aware of all the poster art and everything else. And in 1980, it was like, it was like being in a museum. It was like being in the Met, you know, seeing these posters and this stuff. And they had it behind glass and photographs of the band. And the whole lobby was decked out. And, and in 1979, at New Year's, when Bill Graham came down as the giant butterfly, at the top of the stairs at the Warfield, if you know that, they had that butterfly hanging with like a kind of a paper mache Bill Graham in the middle of it. It was really, really special. They also had slideshows going on in the lobby um, of just, you know, Grateful Dead stuff from the Dead archives and the Bill Graham archives on screens. And, and apparently every night, Bill would critique what happened, but not the band, what his team was doing. Bill was a really remarkable man. And so he would go on and he would say, you know, uh, the slideshow uh, left-hand side projector wasn't working for the first three minutes. That can't happen. Um, you know, the coat check people weren't working fast enough. He, he even said that... Um, that's important. Right. Please fix the sign on the water fountain in the lobby because the one that's up there is unacceptable. Okay? So then Bill finally said to his, his masses that were gathered for him, his lieutenants, it was uh, Brian Auger, who worked for him for many years, and the Barsotti brothers. And he said, um, lastly, he goes, Mr. Lesh has requested hand towels larger than the ones presently available to him. <laughs> Quote, unquote. I must say, simply based on the amicable manner in which the request was put forth, I see no reason why we don't attempt to comply with his simple wish. <laughs> Bill Graham is saying this. <laughs> the only thing to be determined at this point is the size and color and whether they are on consignment, a gift, or a sale to the Grateful Dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bill. That's Bill Graham. Thanks for joining us, 1980. We have a great show. We'll see you for 1981 in a couple days. Thank you. Thank you. 
tried to stand out in the pouring rain. Now I want last voice is calling you, and I guess it's time you go. It's just one thing I ask of you. Just one thing for me Please forget you knew my name A oh, darling Jubilee 
If that jubilee don't come Baby, I'll meet you on the run It's just one thing I ask of you Just one thing for me
Some says I am, some says I ain't.
Bobby Pin Willow how to cry, cry, cry. Taught the clouds how to cover up the clear blue sky. Tears of crap for that woman, they're gonna flood you, big river. And I'm gonna sit right here till I
you're making me feel Need some indication that all of this is real now Oh 
like Jack and Jill. Mama told the sailor, one heat up, one cool down, leave nothing for the tailor. Just like Jack and Jill.
Thank you. We'll be back in just a few minutes with more music for you all.
He was the strongest man I ever lived on. One day while Simpson he was walking along, looked down upon the ground, saw him drop up. And he stretched out his arm, chains broke like rain. And he got to move.
out again The lady fairly left in That's how it stands today You decide if you was wise
to Terrapin
My keys out on Main Street Chicago, New York, Alaska It's all on the same street Your typical city involved in a typical daydream Hang it up and see what tomorrow be Dallas, we got a stop machine Houston, too close to New Orleans New York, got the ways of me Most of the time they're sitting and crying at home and One of these days they know they gotta get going they're Out of the door and down on the street all night I'm trucking like a few dumb men Once told me you got to play your hand Sometimes the cards are worth a dime If you don't lay it You know she ain't the same Living our heads Vitamin C and cocaine All the bank can say Is ain't in shame Trucking Up the buffalo Been thinking You got to mellow slow It takes time You pick a place to go Hotel window. Got a tip, they're gonna keep the door in. I like to get some sleep before I travel. But if you got a warrant, I guess you gotta go. Busted down on Bourbon Street, set up like a bowling Oh, strange trip it's been
you hear that song
sunshine daydream Walk you in the top tree I'm going where the wind goes I'm blooming like a rainbow I'm breathing more freely Right out soon and I'll catch you in the morning sunshine Sunshine daydream Sunshine
Well, thank you all for coming down and joining us in a, as we dip yet again into the well of uh, unconscious memories that in, involve everything that the Grateful Dead ever did. So God bless you. Thank you for coming and help us out. It's always fun to do these things. Just, just kind of get a feeling of what it was like <coughs> back there when I don't really remember. <laughs> anyway, I also want to encourage everyone here to consider becoming an organ donor. I'm, an, uh, I'm a liver transplant recipient. I'm only alive today because of an organ donor who saved the lives of eight people. Cody was his name. So I'd like to ask you all, one and all, to turn to somebody that you love, like Cody did, and, and that loves you and knows you well. Say to them, hey, if anything ever happens to me, I want to be an organ donor, because it's family that always counts in those situations. So, there you have it. If anything ever happens to me, I want to be an organ donor. Simple as that. And we got, uh, we got, uh, actually, we have two more for you. Good 
my honey There you were my only true one All the birds that were singing Are flown except you Roll, roll, roll. There you 
gonna listen to the river sing sweet songs to rock my soul. Thank you. Thank you. Our players tonight, Alex Cofer on drums. Rob Barocco on keys and vocals. Stu Allen on guitar and vocals. Graham Lesh on guitar and vocals. Here's Relip on drum. I'm Phil Lesh. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you down the road. <laughs>